forget to recognize when Jesus told her, you know what, go and sin no more. He gave her a start over. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She was able to live life she, like she never lived it before. This is going to be a new experience for her to live life and to live the way God wanted her to live it. And so we thank God that, you know what, God is doing. He's doing just that. And I'm just believing God for you. That whatever, in whatever area, that God would do a start over. That God, you know what? I can admit, like the woman caught in adultery, it was me, God. That was me messed some stuff up. That was her. She made those choices. But God, you know what? I can admit it and I can say, God, I need you to start some things over. Give me a new beginning. Hallelujah. And so we just thank God for all that God is, is doing. And hallelujah. So let's go to the word. Amen. All right, let's go to Mark, the 10th chapter. Starting at the 17th verse. All right, Mark, Mark 10, 17. I will be reading out of the New Living Translation. All right. As Jesus was starting out on his way to Jerusalem, a man came running up to him, knelt down, and said, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus asked. Only God is truly good. But to answer your question, you know the commandments. You must not murder, you must not commit adultery, you must not steal, you must not testify falsely, you must not cheat anyone, honor your father and mother. Teacher, the man replied, I've obeyed all these commandments since I was young. Looking at the man, Jesus felt genuine love for him. There is still one thing you haven't done, he told him. Go and sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. At this, the man face fell and he went away sad for he had many possessions. Hallelujah. So you see, I have some money up here. Woo. However, I'm not going to talk about money. <laughs> so you'll be like, well, okay. So let's read this out of the Message Bible. All right. As he went out into the street, a man came running up, greeted, greeted him with great reverence, and asked, good teacher, what must I do to get eternal life? Jesus said, why are you calling me good? No one is good, only God. You know the commandments. Don't murder, don't commit adultery, don't steal, don't lie, don't cheat. Honor your father and mother. He said, teacher, I have from my youth kept them all. Jesus looked him hard in the eye and loved him. He said, there's one thing left. Go sell whatever you own and give it to the poor. All your wealth will, be, will then be heavenly wealth. And come follow me. The man face clouded over. This was the last thing he expected to hear. And he walked off with a heavy heart. He was holding on tight to a lot of things and not about to let go. And so just for a quick thought, you know I'm Julie not up here too long, but just for a quick thought, one thing you lack. And so I just want to be able to, uh, to talk about this, that when we look at this story, Jesus said to him, there's one thing left. And so there was this rich young ruler. And of course, again, talking about this story, you know, the, this chapter, part of this chapter, talking about wealth and the rich, being rich and all that. But in this, I want to be able to talk about 
this one thing that we lack. And so in this story, the rich man, if you look in, as we was reading the story, we can see that he had a genuine uh, love and a devotion towards God. Because first of all, he worshiped as an act of reverence and respect to Jesus, he began to bow down. And I imagine he probably began to sing a worship song, bow down and worship him. And begin just to, you know, just think about it, just begin to praise and adore God. I worship him, I reverence him, I fear him. And so he understood who he was. And then he began to say, good teacher and he recognized the characteristics of Jesus that Jesus being good teacher first he's being good that we can say amen to amen. and he was a teacher so God was a good teacher and so when by doing this this all was an act of worship he understood who he was standing before. And so when he, when you recognize that I can be able to stand before a great teacher, Jesus being our teacher, um, expressed through the, the Holy Spirit, that you can ask questions. So anytime you have a great teacher, you can ask questions. You know, those teachers, when we were in school, when we didn't, we didn't think they were good teachers, we dared to ask a question. But when you had those teachers that would just allow you, they were so good at what they do that they allowed you to ask any question. And they say, well, there's no, there's no dumb questions. Ask whatever you want to know because I'll give you the answer. And so he recognized Jesus as being a good teacher that he was willing to say, well, you know what? I have a question for you. And the question was, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And so Jesus began to answer him and said, you know the commandments. Okay. That you must not murder and you must not commit adultery. You must not steal. You must not testify falsely. You must not cheat anyone. Honor your father and mother. And then the man said, teacher. Again, recognizing the characteristics of Jesus being a teacher. I've obeyed all these commandments since I was young. And this story, again, we always talk about the, the money aspect, but it also represents um, a man that was taught the word of God at a young age. Because he said, I've already done all that. I've been doing that since I was young. And the Bible teaches us as parents that we are to train up our children. And so we are to teach them the word of God so that they can know. We need to be able to proclaim the word of God to them day and night in our homes. So that our children will know the word. And so he said, I've already done these. I've been doing these since I was young. So you think about the consistency in his relationship, that you know what, that he understood God and the, and the commandments that you know what, I'm gonna keep these from a young age until I, as, I'm, as he was getting older. And so he's, he's done that. And so Jesus will said, you know what? He said, there's still one thing left. And so, but let me, let me back up and say, well, when he was taught the scriptures, he was just not only taught, but he learned the scriptures. And then he not only learned the scriptures, but he obeyed the scriptures. So he learned obedience at a young age. And so again, the responsibility as parents to be able to put the word of God into our children so that they can be taught, they can learn, and then they can obey from a young age. And so it's important, of course, as even as adults, that we are taught the word of God so that way we can learn the word of God and then we can obey. It's hard to obey something if you're not taught. And so therefore the importance of being taught 
the word of God. And so he said, I did that. I've been doing that from a young age. And so Jesus said, there's one thing left. And so can you imagine? He's probably wondering, what is it? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. Wait a minute, I've, I've done the commandments, what else? Come on, I've done that from a young age, what else? And so then he said, well, I need you to go and sell all your possessions and give to the poor. And so you imagine again, from a young age, he kept the commandments thinking now, thinking he's been doing everything to inherit eternal life. Believing he's done everything to inherit eternal life, but he still had that nagging question, what must I do? And to his surprise, it might have been a question, you know, really, he wasn't even expecting this type of answer because to his surprise, you have one thing left. And so, you know, today, even the question is asked, is there one thing that God is requiring of you today? Because you say, well, you know what? I worship him. I come and I bow before him. I respect and honor him. And that Jesus can say to us this morning, I need you to examine yourself and say there's one thing left. And so here this rich man thinking he's done all that to his surprise, thinking he's done everything he needed to do. And so he was surprised. And Jesus said, go sell everything you own. Give it to the poor. All your wealth then will be heavenly wealth. We're going to do what Jesus wanted him to do in exchange. Give up your material wealth. And then I will give you heavenly wealth. I will give you a spiritual wealth. Priceless. Priceless. Money can't buy this spiritual wealth that we have when we come into relationship with Jesus Christ. However, this man was disappointed, to say the least. It was the, the message Bible said, it was the last thing he expected to hear. Tell me anything else but that. Because his treasure, his heart was in his possessions. Tell me anything else, but not my wealth. And so this rich man walked off with such a heavy heart. So he was holding on tight to a lot, to his money. And so he walked away. And so the message Bible says, he was holding on tight to a lot of things. And he was not about to let it go. Is there something you're holding on to that you're not about to let go? That Jesus is saying to us today that there's one thing left. And we have to examine ourselves and say, what am I holding on to? And I thought about how we... we how you can hold on to money... And your hand is so tight, can't nobody pull nothing out of your hand. Now, some of us, the issue is our money. That one thing left, it is the money. Because I can't, I don't, you know, I can't give an offering. I definitely don't pay my tithe, because that's 10%. And so, some of us are holding on to our wealth. But Jesus said, I will give you heavenly wealth. I will give you more than you, what your money could buy, more than what you could ever want or need. And so is it money, your possessions, your material things that you're holding on tight to? That God, you know what, I worship. Just imagine, hallelujah. But I'm holding on, hallelujah. 
Now, I, I mean, I ain't caught up in that much worship. I'm going to let my money go. But that's what we're doing. But that's what we're doing. Hallelujah, I bow, Lord, I bow, Lord, I bow. My money's bound too. But I'm not about to let my money go because I don't, I'm not going to tithe. I'm not going to give an offering. And so we're holding tight. And we come and we reverence God. Are we holding tight on to people? That we're not willing to let them go and we're just holding so tight. And we come in and relationships and we hold on so tight. And we just come in and Lord I bow, I worship before you. Hallelujah. But I'm holding on to people. I'm holding on to relationships. That one thing left. But I worship you God. But I'm staying, I'm holding tight. Holding so tight to family. Now, it, yes, family's wonderful. But understand, when family can um, allow, well, hinder your growth. And when people can hinder your growth, then that's when you have to decide, I have to let you go. And so, um, so we have to really examine our relationships with people and our friendships, our associates. Am I holding on so tightly to them that I don't have room to grow and mature in God, to grow even in the natural things of life? And then I come in and I worship. I come in and I worship and I worship and I'm holding on to so much hurt. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, God. You're awesome, God. I will bless your name, but I'm holding on to hurt. Hallelujah. God, I bow before you. And I come and kneel at the altar. And I'm holding on to offense. I'm holding on to past hurts. Hallelujah. God, you're worthy. Hallelujah. And so what are we holding on to? That's causing us not to grow in God, not to mature in God, not to be all that God would have us to be. And I began to wonder, I said, well, it must be a trust issue. Do I trust God with my money? Because if I trust God with my money, I can let it go. If I trust God with people and my relationships and my family, and despite all the things that are going on, I'd be willing to let them go and say, God, you do what you need to do. If I trust, if it's, since it's a trust issue, God, if I got pain and offense in my heart, then God, I'll be willing to let it go. In the midst of worship, I'm going to let the offense and the hurt go. Hallelujah. So that I can grow and mature in God. So do I trust God? Because apparently this man, you know what? He, he, apparently he walked away, but apparently he did not trust Jesus to give him more, so much more than he could ever imagine. He didn't trust God with his wealth. And he walked away with a heavy heart. He was very just, just pitiful because he just, you know what, not, not my money. But he was willing to, you know what, he was willing to walk away and take his money with him. He just took his money with him and walked away. So God is requiring of us to examine ourselves and say, what is it? What is that one thing left? And I began to even... One day I said, well, God, you know, even as a church, as a whole, what is that one thing that we lack? What is that one thing that we're just holding on to that we may we just, uh, we're having such a hard time doing? And I began to think about even with evangelism and how in that area where we're, we're still lacking in that area. And I begin to think about, you know, how we come out of the evangelism conference and, um, 
And but in all the good word, and the question was asked, well, you know what? After the conference, what you gonna do next? And some of us still haven't done anything. And as a church, because we, you know, it's really, um, you know, the church was not represented, if you will, in the conference. And so to be able to, to look at the, the ministry as a whole and say, you know what, in the area of evangelism, this is where we're lacking, to telling people about Jesus, getting the word out that Jesus saves and that he's the best thing. We're still lacking in that area. But God, we can come in and we can worship. We can come in and we can be taught on Wednesday night in Bible study. We can learn and we can learn how to obey the word. But then in the area of evangelism and witnessing, we're still lacking. And so I said, Lord, you know what? Help us. Help us in that area as a church. That if we, we know that Jesus is the best thing that has ever happened to us, Jesus has made all the difference in our lives and that we would not trade him for anything, trade our salvation for anything, then we have a, a mission and a purpose to share Jesus with people. And so we have to again say, well, you know what? God, what is that one thing that I lack? Because God, if I'm saying I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, then God, show me, examine my heart. Let me be willing to expose myself to you and say, what is it that I'm holding on to, that I'm not willing to let go? And so I thought of a, um, I thought of a little illustration. Um, well, of course, I had my money, but let's see, I need a chair. I need a chair just right here. And also,